Hey guys! Today, I will bring you a sci-fi thriller TV series, La Brea Season 1. A quiet pond suddenly began to emit strange bubbles in a central park in Los Angeles. This scene caught the attention of a nearby dog, who barked incessantly at the pond. At this time, an on-duty policewoman had not yet realized the danger approaching. Suddenly, the ground beneath her feet cracked open, and she fell through before she could understand what was happening. Shortly after, the cement pavement began to collapse on a large scale, and the water in the pond vanished instantly. Eve, sensing trouble, hurriedly tried to reverse her car to escape, but chaos had already ensued around her. It wasn't long before a black sedan blocked her path. In a state of panic, Eve, her daughter Izzy, and her son Josh had no choice but to get out of the car, but the chaos around them intensified. One by one, high-rise buildings fell, and panicked citizens rushed to flee. Amid this chaos, Josh saw a little girl fall to the ground and kindly helped her up. Just as he was about to continue running, a passerby knocked him over. As Eve, running frantically, realized her son was not following, she urged her disabled daughter and ran towards Josh. But the ground under Josh collapsed just then, and he fell through. As the collapse zone expanded, Eve had no choice but to run back. Unfortunately, it was too late, and she fell into the hole. However, her daughter Izzy grabbed her at a critical moment. Facing a dire situation, with cars potentially crashing towards them, Eve made a heart-wrenching decision. She told her daughter, I love you, then forcefully freed herself from her daughter's grasp and fell into the bottomless pit. Izzy, heartbroken yet unable to grieve, moved her disabled legs with all her might and eventually managed to escape. Looking back, the once bustling district was replaced by a massive sinkhole about three kilometers in diameter, seemingly ready to devour everything above ground. This bizarre phenomenon quickly drew military attention. They dispatched numerous helicopters to investigate, one landing on a near- With immense anxiety, after crossing several mountains, she finally spotted a thick smoke in the jungle. Without hesitation, she ran towards it, but was stunned by the sight upon arriving. Vehicles that had fallen from the ground were scattered in disarray, and most of the people who had fallen into the pit were still alive. Eve found it unbelievable, but everything before her eyes confirmed it was real. She called out loudly for her son, and to her surprise, she saw him. Mother and son were reunited in this underground world. Those who survived the ordeal gathered, looking at each other, none understanding what had happened. Their immediate priority was to figure out where they were, and to find a way back to the surface world. They pooled their limited food and water supplies, which would be strictly rationed from then on. However, no one had anticipated that this world would harbor ferocious monsters. Meanwhile, the military began investigating the sinkhole in the city. They deployed drones, but even after half an hour, they hadn't reached the bottom. At the request of Commander Sophia, the operator sent the drone down to a depth of 6 kilometers, where they finally discovered the strange crack. But the drone signal disappeared just then, and no valuable clues were found. The military had to hold a press conference to announce a temporary halt to the rescue efforts, as it was deemed impossible for anyone to survive a fall of several kilometers. But Gavin, an exceptional pilot, who had suffered a severe accident three years earlier, refused to believe this. Ever since the accident, he had experienced strange visions, including the giant birds he had just seen. While comforting his daughter, more images flashed through his mind. He seemed to see his wife still alive, and having successfully reunited with their son. He even clearly saw the tail number of the military drone that had just crashed. This strengthened Gavin's belief that, those falling into the pit might still be alive. He approached Commander Sophia, pleading with the military, not to give up the search. He shared the images from his mind in detail. Unfortunately, Sophia thought he was hallucinating from grief, and warned him not to spread rumors. Frustrated, Gavin decided to investigate on his own. Back home, he searched through old photos, because the stone with the blood-red handprint felt eerily familiar. Her father's actions baffled Izzy, and she believed her mother and brother couldn't have survived. Despite Gavin's explanations, it to confirm his suspicions, Gavin drove overnight to the location where the photo was taken. He took out his tools and began to dig frantically like Izzy urged her father to accept reality and stop mumbling every day. Suddenly, Gavin seemed to have found something, he stopped his daughter, who was about to leave. 
Digging through the dirt, he astonishingly found the wedding ring that Eve always wore. His daughter couldn't believe her eyes. Gavin also couldn't explain it himself, but everything that had happened seemed to indicate that Eve and Josh were still alive. Meanwhile, in the underground world, a dire wolf suddenly appeared in the present. Seeing the danger, Eve and her son quickly turned to flee. But the agile dire wolf leaped great distances, chasing them to the survivor's camp. Seeing her son bitten and falling to the ground, Eve picked up a stone slab, ready to fight to the death. At that moment, she forgot all fear. Just as they seemed doomed, a gunshot rang out. It was Ty extending a helping hand. Once the crisis was averted, Eve quickly checked her son's injuries. After opening his clothing, Eve saw deep bite marks on Josh's abdomen. They hurriedly carried him onto a bus. After a quick bandaging, Dr. Sam told Eve only antibiotics and stitches could save Josh from the danger. Otherwise, given his current blood loss, he might not survive more than two days. This news plunged Eve into panic again. Where could she find these two types of medicine at a moment's notice? However, Ty said he knew where the ambulance was. Eve pleaded for help from Ty. Then, Ty, Eve, and Dr. Sam immediately set off to find the ambulance. As time passed, Josh's condition worsened. By that evening, they had yet to return to the camp. A female survivor, nearly driven mad by the tense atmosphere, fired a flare into the sky, hoping for outside help. However, this act caught the attention of a mysterious old man. His attire made it clear he was not a modern person who had fallen from the surface. Meanwhile, Eve and her group finally found the ambulance in the dark. Dr. Sam eagerly opened the door and found antibiotics and sutures in the storage compartment. Eve finally felt relieved. But the next second, she suddenly no Ty closed his eyes and fired the last bullet. Miraculously, it hit and killed the beast. Before they could catch their breath, the noise attracted another saber-toothed tiger. The group, terrified, continued to run and eventually hid under a cliff, praying the tiger would spare them. After searching for a while, the tiger failed to find its prey under its nose, and they were temporarily safe. But Eve was extremely anxious because her son, bitten by the dire wolf, was still waiting for the likes. Just when it seemed they could not escape, the tiger fell directly into a pit. What was going on? Eve and Ty cautiously moved forward and discovered it was a trap for capturing animals. Could it be that, besides them, other humans existed here? Still shaken, they dared not investigate further and decided to find Dr. Sam first since all the sutures and antibiotics were in his backpack. But the jungle was perilous at night and their only flashlight had fallen off the cliff with Dr. Sam. Not daring to take risks, they waited until the next morning, when they finally heard faint cries for help at the foot of the mountain. Dr. Sam had not died, he was just immobilized from the fall. With their support, Dr. Sam, enduring severe pain, stood up. But his back injury made it impossible to walk on his own. Knowing Eve was anxious to return and save her son, he asked her to take the medicine back to the camp first, and even instructed her on the specific dosage of antibiotics. Eve was tempted, but refused to abandon Dr. Sam out of decency. With Eve's insistence, the three moved slowly toward the camp. Soon, they were all exhausted. Dr. Sam suggested Eve go ahead again, and Ty promised to bring him back safely. Seeing this, Eve finally took the backpack with the medicine and ran towards the camp. At this time, Josh's condition had drastically worsened, and Sam's daughter Riley, who was taking care of him, was highly anxious. Seeing him slipping into shock from the pain, fortunately, Eve arrived just in time. She quickly took out the antibiotics and, following Dr. Sam's instructions, administered the injection, saving her son's life. Meanwhile, the military's investigation into the sinkhole was progressing slowly, and the government was starting to pressure them. At her wit's end, Commander Sophia suddenly remembered something Gavin had told her. Why did Gavin know the drone's number? Could he really see the images at the bottom of the sinkhole? To find out the truth, she specifically arranged for Gavin to be brought back to the office. After a detailed inquiry, she discovered a shocking fact, the wedding ring of Gavin's wife, when Carbon-14 dated, turned out to be 10,000 years old. Could it be that they had traveled to ancient times? Gavin couldn't explain it definitively, 
but he firmly believed that his wife and son were still alive. Moreover, he had seen a dazzling space fisher during a plane crash three years ago, identical to the images captured by the military now. At his insistence, the military finally agreed to deploy the latest model of a hover fighter jet to explore the bottom of the sinkhole. Back in the underground world, Josh, having received timely treatment, had recovered his health. With Ty's help, Dr. Sam also limped back to the camp. But a new crisis soon emerged. The lack of food began to expose people's true natures, causing frequent conflicts. At that moment, a giant prehistoric monster suddenly appeared, its massive body exuding a robust and oppressive force. The terrified survivors scattered and hid, daring not even to breathe heavily. Only the plump policewoman hadn't reacted in time, and stood staring as the monster approached her. She realized she needed to flee, only when the chocolate bar in her hand fell to the ground. Luckily, the beast did not attack humans, but instead dove into a pile of food. Though it was the survivors' remaining rations, they had no way to confront such a terrifying beast. Within a minute, all the food was gone. The satiated monster then contentedly left. Although they had escaped another calamity, the people felt even heavier inside. Now, finding their way back and surviving had become problematic. Fortunately, Eve had seen someone setting up animal traps in the area and thought of solving the food crisis through hunting. She and Ty set up a simple trap using wire and branches to bolster everyone's confidence. Soon after, they caught an unlucky rabbit. But before they could celebrate, Ty suddenly sensed something was amiss. Following his gaze, Eve froze too, for a hungry brown bear was not far away. It was indeed an instance of misfortune compounded. Eve had no choice but to release the rabbit they had just caught to distract the bear. While the bear was momentarily confused, they quickly ran towards the back. The bear soon gave chase. In their panic, they ducked into a small cave. As the bear scrambled at the entrance, rocks from the ceiling fell, instantly blocking the narrow entrance. Ty tried in vain to move the stones. They could only head to the other side of the cave to see if there was another exit. Just then, a flashlight suddenly shone ahead. Eve tensed up and moved closer, only to find that Lucas and his mother had come out earlier to look for food. They were shocked to learn that the cave entrance was blocked. The helpless group of four had no choice but to continue exploring the cave together. After much effort, they realized it was a bottomless pit. They even found human bones during their exploration, and from the numerous scratch marks on the walls, it was evident that the person had lived there for many years. As they began to feel hopeless, Ty faintly heard the sound of dripping water. Passing through several corridors, they finally found a pool of water. Could there be an exit to the outside world here? Ty carefully observed and found a type of algae in the pool that only grows in sunlight, indicating that the pool must be connected to the outside. Eve felt it was too risky to jump into the water, but Lucas and his mother thought they should try. While they were arguing, Ty dived into the water. Minutes later, he resurfaced, confirming that there was indeed a hidden exit in the pool. This news relieved the group. Meanwhile, the military had devised a detailed plan to rescue those trapped at the bottom of the sinkhole. They were about to dispatch the latest fighter jet. However, deciding who should undertake this mission became a challenge. Gavin was the best candidate, but having retired three years ago, the military was reluctant to risk him. Out of options, Gavin turned to his friend Levi, an ace pilot in the force, and the only one he trusted to safely bring back his wife and son. Due to the mission's dangerous and unique nature, the military arranged a high-profile send-off for Levi. Gavin even personally handed over his wedding ring, hoping it could be delivered to his wife. With high hopes, Levi flew the fighter jet over the sinkhole. Initially, everything seemed normal, but as he descended, the data on the dashboard began to scramble, and the aircraft started to shake violently. Then, communication was severely disrupted, and from Levi's intermittent reports, it was learned that the engine had lost power, followed by a total signal loss. Commander Sophia struggled to accept the outcome, but everyone had to admit that the carefully prepared rescue mission had failed. In the underground world, a fighter jet emerged from the sky's fissure, trailing thick smoke, and crashed into the distant jungle. All the survivors were incredulous, wondering if these were rescuers sent from the surface.
Eve gathered everyone the following day to confirm this hypothesis, planning to search the crash site. Although some expressed concerns about potential monster attacks, this might be their only chance to leave the underground world. So, Eve led a group of brave young people on the journey. They hadn't walked a kilometer when they made a shocking discovery, a parachute was hanging from the branches, but the pilot was nowhere to be found. While puzzled, a saber-toothed tiger's roar, followed by a burst of gunfire, suddenly came from behind. The group quickly looked around, and then saw a tense Levi. As he passed through the space-time rift, his plane lost control, and he had no choice but to parachute to safety. But upon landing, he was immediately targeted by two saber-toothed tigers. Fortunately, he had carried a weapon with him. Eve was naturally overjoyed to see this old friend, indicating they might finally be able to leave this cursed place. However, Levi advised not to be too optimistic yet, as he wasn't sure if the plane was completely destroyed, and his GPS device had also lost signal. Their immediate plan was to find the plane, and then decide on the next steps. Thus, the group set off towards the crash site. Meanwhile, at the camp, a little girl Lily and her sister Veronica argued, and she ran crying into the nearby woods. Suddenly, she noticed something rapidly approaching her. In a panic, she retreated, but tripped and fell. When she regained her senses, she saw a cold corpse lying next to her. Hearing the girl's screams, other survivors hurried over, only to be stunned by the sight. The deceased had died in a gruesome way, with veins bulging abnormally, and there were no traces of an attack around. Dr. Sam immediately conducted an autopsy. He concluded that, the victim had suffered a strong electric shock before death, a puzzling finding given that they were in a world 10,000 years prehistoric, and they had never seen lightning since arriving. Could it be that ancient humans had mastered electricity? The only option was to find the little girl, and ask her what she had seen. However, traumatized, she remained silent about her ordeal. After patiently coaxing her, Ty finally got her to relax and speak. The little girl described an old man approaching her, but suddenly turning and walking away. She remembered a strange symbol on the back of his clothing, a red handprint. Unbeknownst to them, the mysterious old man was watching them from afar. Meanwhile, after a long trek, Eve and her group finally reached the crash site. Upon inspection, they found the plane's computer system functioning normally, but the right engine was beyond repair. The parts needed for replacement wouldn't be available until 12,000 years in the future, meaning their hopes of rescue were dashed again. Although deeply disappointed, Levi had brought a significant amount of food, alleviating their immediate crisis. Remembering Gavin's request, Levi returned to the cabin to retrieve the wedding ring from the safe. Just then, he noticed a signal on the radar screen, less than 5 kilometers away. Could it be that the military had sent another rescue team? Encouraged, the group decided to camp there, and head towards the signal the next day. But as they were crossing a small river, they encountered a significant danger. Just as they were about to cross the river, they failed to notice, a terrifying python lurking beneath the water's surface. Because the river was only thigh deep, everyone had let their guard down. Suddenly, Riley sensed something wrong and screamed that there was something in the water. Before Eve could realize what was happening, Riley was dragged underwater. Levi, who was at the back, quickly dived in to rescue her, but the water turned eerily quiet under everyone's watchful eyes. After searching for a while without finding her, Levi resurfaced. Just then, the giant python appeared at the surface, wrapped around Riley. Seeing this, Levi quickly drew his pistol and dove back into the water. As everyone anxiously awaited, several muffled gunshots rang out, and Riley was finally rescued. Seeing that she was unharmed, everyone's tension eased, and they hastened their pace, reaching their destination before dark. But the scene before them, once again overturned their understanding. A stone fortress stood among the mountains. Considering this was supposed to be 10,000 years ago, how could primitive people have such architectural skills? Although the place felt unusually eerie, they had to enter to track down the source of the radar signal. However, everyone missed the huge blood-colored handprint on the gate. The vast castle was deserted, surrounded by an eerie silence. After a brief search, Eve and Levi found a strangely shaped house. Inside, they discovered a modern human body lying on the floor, its veins bulging, similarly to the person who had died near the camp. 
Next to the body was a remote walkie-talkie, apparently the source of the signal. Levi quickly took a photo, and after comparing it, realized it resembled one of the people in the picture. His mission was not only to rescue the survivors from the underground world, but also to find the seven scientists, who had fallen into the sinkhole during Gavin's accident three years ago. The dead person on the ground was one of them. Eve felt overwhelmed by the situation, but they heard a noise at that moment. Investigating, they found a pile of burning charcoal, which made them tense, as it suggested the castle's owner might not be far away. Meanwhile, Josh and Riley discovered a tunnel inside the house, and cautiously entered, only to find themselves mysteriously outside the castle. As they were about to return, the door suddenly shut. Confused, they suddenly saw a group of fully armed primitive people approaching with spears and menacing expressions. The group had to run as the primitives started shooting arrows. Desperate, even Levi took refuge in a small hut, only to find four children inside. After some coaxing, one of the boys agreed to help them escape. He led them to a dog hole beneath a wall, but a mysterious old man spotted them just as they were about to crawl out. He drew his bow and was about to shoot, when a female leader suddenly stopped him and told them in English that they could leave. Without hesitating, even Levi thanked the boy and hastily crawled out. But what secrets does this enigmatic female leader harbor? Meanwhile, back on the surface, Gavin once again requested military reinforcements. However, due to the failure of the previous mission and the intense earthquakes around the sinkhole, the military temporarily suspended all rescue operations. Helpless, Gavin approached Commander Sophia, who introduced him to Dr. Rebecca, a woman who had long studied the sinkhole. Not only was she one of the leaders of the scientist team from three years ago, but she had also designed a fighter jet capable of operating in the sinkhole. Commander Sophia introduced them, intending to have Gavin pilot this modified fighter jet to perform the rescue mission himself. This was because, a few days earlier, an excavation in the ruins of Los Angeles unearthed a glass bottle, containing a letter from 12,000 years ago, information sent by Eve. Eve thought of this method of sending messages, after noticing the space-time fissure was shrinking, and estimated to disappear in five days. If they did not act quickly, the survivors would never be able to return to the real world. Since Gavin had previously unearthed her ring, she used this method to send a message. According to the date on the letter, the sinkhole fissure was set to close tonight. At the same time, an archaeological team unearthed a 12,000-year-old airplane, buried deep in the mud, and bearing the United States Air Force logo. Gavin immediately recognized it as the fighter jet Levi had piloted into the sinkhole. He had only gone down two days ago, how could it be excavated from 12,000-year-old ruins? Moreover, ground-penetrating radar revealed human remains inside the aircraft, casting a grim premonition for everyone. The only explanation was that, Levi had managed to repair the plane, but had crashed on his return journey. Thinking this, Gavin felt he could no longer hesitate and must personally head to the sinkhole to prevent a tragedy. So, he took off in the modified fighter jet with Dr. Rebecca. He expected a smooth journey, but as he approached the sinkhole, two military fighter jets swiftly crossed his path. It turned out that, Commander Adam had already learned of his actions. To prevent a new earthquake, triggered by a rash entry into the sinkhole, he strongly demanded Gavin return to base immediately or be shot down. Gavin, desperate to rescue his wife and children, was reluctant to give up, but soon found his aircraft firmly locked on by a missile. He thought of using his piloting skills to evade, but Dr. Rebecca unbuckled her seatbelt, advising him not to risk it, as this plane was their only hope for rescue. She then moved to the plane's rear, strapped on a parachute, and prepared to jump into the sinkhole. Gavin urged Rebecca to return to her seat, but she said that, her destiny lay in the underground world, and Gavin's was here, at least for now, and persuaded Gavin back. She also told Gavin to remember the date, November 16, 1988, before jumping into the sinkhole. Gavin didn't understand Dr. Rebecca's meaning. He decided to ignore the military's warnings and go all in. But at that moment, he heard his daughter's voice through the headset, pleading for him to return. Her plea touched him. If his wife and son were trapped in another world forever, he would be his daughter's only remaining family. Weighing his options, he ultimately chose to comply with the military. Meanwhile, Levi was using the walkie-talkie at the camp to call for help, hoping against hope for a miracle. Just as he was about to give up, 
a woman's voice suddenly appeared. Overjoyed, Levi quickly communicated with her. Through the intermittent conversation, he learned that she was a U.S. Air Force engineer, currently residing on a beach in the underground world. Everyone listened intently, as this could be a breakthrough for their return to the surface world. Just as Levi was about to learn more, the walkie-talkie signal was severely disrupted. The next morning, Eve and Levi drove the only remaining vehicle in the camp to the beach, as described by the woman. Upon arrival, they found another fighter jet's wreckage. Just as they were puzzled by this discovery, they suddenly heard the sound of a gun being cocked. A woman in a tattered military uniform emerged. Levi quickly explained their purpose, but she remained cautious until he showed her a photo of the missing scientists, finally relaxing her. This woman, named Diana, had also fallen into the sinkhole three years ago. Since the space fissure had already closed, she had been forced to live there. Relieved to hear that Levi's plane had only a damaged engine, Diana was glad because she happened to have the needed parts. Later, the three returned to the survivor camp together. The desperate survivors were thrilled when Levi mentioned that the plane might be reparable. However, an actual problem soon emerged, who would get to leave the underground world first? Everyone was eager to return, but the plane had limited seats, and conflicts broke out over seat allocation. To ensure fairness, Eve suggested drawing lots. As each name was called, those selected were overjoyed, while those not chosen expressed their strong dissatisfaction. Nevertheless, the list was finalized. Just as everyone was excited, something seemed to emerge from the fissure in the sky again. Then, the survivors found a crash drone on the mountaintop, apparently sent by the US military, and seemingly carrying something valuable. Levi quickly pried open the panel, only to find a small display screen. Curious, he pressed the play button and discovered a video recorded by Gavin. Gavin informed everyone not to attempt to return to the surface via Levi's plane, as it was not workable, and mentioned that the remains of Levi's plane had been excavated on the surface. This revelation shocked everyone. Was their last hope of escaping this world also doomed? In desperate situations, people tend to believe what is in their favor and doubt the video's authenticity. Only Eve knew Gavin well and understood he wouldn't joke about such matters. She advised everyone to stay calm, suggesting that new rescue efforts might arrive soon. Unfortunately, others were running out of patience. Once the space-time fissure closed, they would be trapped forever. As the debate continued, Levi stepped forward, stating he believed Gavin's claims were true, though the cause of the crash remained unknown. Diana suggested that a thorough inspection might prevent it if it was indeed an issue with the plane. This proposal was unanimously supported, even Josh thought they should not give up this only chance to escape. Reluctantly, Eve sought out Mary Beth, knowing her son Lucas had also been selected in the first round of departures. After thoroughly analyzing the risks of the journey, the two mothers agreed. Meanwhile, Levi and Diana were making final checks on the plane. They soon discovered a potential fault and assumed it was the real cause of the crash. It was identified early, so they believed the return journey would be safe. Just as they felt somewhat relieved, even Mary Beth drove up, stressing that everyone on the plane, including Levi, would die if they attempted to leave. Not convinced by Eve and Mary Beth's words, Levi planned to gather the others at the camp and go together. However, Mary Beth, known for her fiery temper, pulled out a handgun, intending to force them to cancel the flight. Diana had shown no signs of abnormality, but seizing a moment when others were distracted, she quickly drew her gun and confronted Mary Beth. Their standoff escalated, and Diana fired first, hitting the plane's engine. Mary Beth's return shot accurately struck Diana in the abdomen. Despite Dr. Sam's immediate medical attention, Diana's injuries were too severe, and she died, unable to escape the underground world. Lucas was shocked to learn that his mother had killed someone, unaware that Mary Beth had acted to save him. Now that the plane was irreparably damaged, their hope of escape dwindled significantly. Faced with everyone's blame, only Eve insisted, claiming her husband Gavin would surely rescue them. However, by that evening, the surface world had sent no further rescue, and as they watched in despair, the space-time fissure gradually closed, disappearing completely. Everyone felt desolate, wondering if they would ever return to the surface world. Meanwhile, after landing, Gavin was immediately arrested by the military. Commander Adam had him sign a non-disclosure agreement, forbidding him from revealing anything about the sinkhole. To leave as quickly as possible, Gavin complied. 
back home, he immediately met with the now-dismissed commander Sophia. Inspired by her hints, Gavin finally understood what Dr. Rebecca had told him before parachuting, November 16, 1988, the day he was adopted. Could his origins be connected to the mysterious sinkhole? To uncover the truth, they decided to take a final stand. Elsewhere, Lucas and Scott were digging in the forest. Suddenly, Lucas seemed to be touching something. Upon digging it out, it was a locked wooden box. Lucas smashed the lock with a shovel, and to their astonishment, it was filled with gold bars dated 1863. These were from the American Civil War era, but how could they appear in an underground world 12,000 years ago? Could the space-time fisher have appeared many times in different periods? Shortly after, the survivors noticed a suspicious figure, lurking around the camp, and upon catching up, discovered it was the young boy, who had helped them escape from the primitive tribe, his hand still bleeding from a wound. Eve brought him back to the camp to treat Dr. Sam. Despite his silence when questioned about his intentions, most survivors concluded the mysterious old man must have sent him to spy, possibly preluding a war. However, Eve believed, such a young child could not be involved in espionage. To show goodwill, they decided to return him to his tribe. A few of them set off in an off-road vehicle, with the boy showing visible excitement on his first car ride. During the drive, Eve learned his name was Isaiah, the grandson of the mysterious old man from the tribe. Isaiah revealed that from the day the outsiders had fallen into their world, their tribe had monitored them comprehensively. This revelation chilled the group. Just as they were about to turn back, a group of burly men suddenly emerged and surrounded them. They were then taken to the primitive tribe's fortress. Although the old man was relieved to see his grandson safe, he still did not trust the outsiders. Fortunately, the female leader showed gratitude towards Eve and the others, generously offering them fresh vegetables and fruits. But just then, the village alarm sounded. It turned out that someone had kidnapped Isaiah. Everyone immediately searched, only to discover that the culprit was the parachuting Dr. Rebecca. The mysterious old man soon caught up, seemingly unsurprised, and even called out Dr. Rebecca. By the time even another person arrived, the old man had already taken the boy away, and Dr. Rebecca had been stabbed in the waist. She insisted they must retrieve the boy, as he was key to everyone's escape. Meanwhile, Gavin was rapidly investigating his origins. He visited a local church, where an elderly nun informed him that he had been found abandoned by the roadside as a child, alongside a girl about 10 years old. Gavin had no memory of this, his recollections began only from the day he was taken in. Commander Sophia suspected this was crucial to understanding the mystery. After extensive investigations, they finally located the girl's address. Arriving there, they found she was not home. Suddenly, Gavin felt a strange familiarity, as if he had been there before. Following his intuition, he discovered a small, sinkhole-like depression in the backyard, almost filled in. As they puzzled over this, Gavin's head began to ache intensely. Then, as if a mysterious seal had been broken, he suddenly understood everything. His true identity was that of Isaiah, the boy from the underground world. It explained the strange scar always on his hand, and the odd visions in his mind, which were not hallucinations, but real memories from before he was 12. It turns out that time is not a line but a circle, that intertwines everyone's destinies and fates. Realizing this, Gavin immediately wondered what had happened to his 12,000-year-old self, and who the girl accompanying him through time might have been. Back in the underground world, a saber-toothed tiger posed to attack Isaiah. Just as the tiger pounced, Josh, who happened to be passing by, quickly floored the accelerator, hitting the wild beast and sending it flying. Although the off-road vehicle was wrecked, fortunately, both were unharmed. Even Levi soon arrived, and noticed the scar on the boy's hand. They found it peculiar, as Gavin had a similar scar. There was no time for detailed inquiries, so they decided to return to the village first. After a while, the severely injured Rebecca finally awoke, and told Eve a shocking revelation, the boy Isaiah, was Gavin as a child. It turns out that, a time-space fisher atop the tribe's sacred mountain, allowed a young Gavin to travel through to Los Angeles in 1988, where he lived until he met Eve years later, and they formed a family. Everyone was baffled, by this almost fairy tale like story, but Eve felt, it might indeed be the truth. Rebecca emphasized the importance of taking Isaiah through the fissure, otherwise, history would be altered. 
Eve and Gavin would not have married, and their children, Josh and Izzy, would never have been born. Moreover, the fissure was set to close the next day, with no time to waste. Despite the disbelief of the situation, Eve dared not risk her children's lives, and they hurried toward the sacred mountain. However, they soon saw the mysterious old man and his followers preparing to capture them. They cautiously tried to avoid detection, but were eventually stopped by a cliff. Isaiah told them that the only way forward was a suspension bridge nearby. With no other options, they had to take their chances. Unfortunately, the old man had already anticipated this and was waiting at the bridge. Although even Isaiah managed to cross, Levi and Josh were taken captive. In a critical moment, Levi cut the bridge's ropes, severing the path across the cliff. Enraged, the old man demanded that Eve bring Isaiah to meet him at the end of the ravine, or he would execute Levi and Josh on the spot. With no way forward, and unwilling to watch her friends and son sacrificed, Eve was at a loss. Just then, the female tribal leader and Ty arrived at the scene. Upon learning of the situation, they immediately decided to head to the survivor camp to seek reinforcements. Waiting for reinforcements seemed the only option, so Eve and Isaiah stayed put. By evening, however, the reinforcements still hadn't arrived, increasing Eve's anxiety. She instructed Isaiah that, no matter what happened, he must go through the fissure in the sacred mountain. Then, she headed alone to the meeting place agreed upon with the mysterious old man, though she knew it was a futile attempt. When Eve appeared before the old man the next morning without his grandson, he was furious and ordered her capture. Fortunately, the reinforcements finally arrived, and after a fight, the survivors managed to subdue the attackers armed with melee weapons. The old man fled, and the group, unable to pursue him, continued towards the sacred mountain. Meanwhile, Gavin finally found the girl who had traveled with him. She also had no memory of her past. It wasn't until Sophia showed her a fossil excavated from the ruins that some long-sealed memories began to resurface. Her real identity was Lily, the young girl from the camp. She then showed everyone what she had carried on the day of the crossing, including a map given to her by Dr. Rebecca, which detailed the specific locations of various sinkholes. According to the map, a sinkhole in Seattle would appear the next day, potentially allowing them to use the fissure to bring the trapped survivors back to the real world. Gavin immediately informed the military. To prevent disasters associated with the sinkhole's appearance, they had to evacuate the city's residents urgently. By monitoring unusual seismic waves nearby, they finally located the exact position of the new sinkhole. Surprisingly, the sinkhole was only about 3 meters in diameter, posing no threat to the outside world. Meanwhile, Eve and Isaiah finally reached the sacred mountain after a perilous journey, and discovered a small fissure in time space. Encouraged by Eve, Isaiah slowly approached it, seemingly understanding the responsibility he carried. As the light flickered, Isaiah vanished. Soon after, the others arrived, observing the significantly shrunken fissure and realizing Isaiah had successfully crossed. Lily felt a sense of loss, unable to join Isaiah in 1988. As the group was about to return to the camp, the closing fissure flickered, and in the next second, Josh, Riley, and Lily suddenly were sucked into the fissure and also crossed into 1988. Eve was bewildered, realizing this meant their family relationships would be utterly confused in the future. At that moment, Gavin, determined to rescue his wife and son, jumped into the sinkhole, with his daughter Izzy and the adult Lily. After some time, they woke up on a beach, and seeing the extinct giant woolly mammoths before them, they confirmed they had successfully traveled back 12,000 years. This concludes the first season of La Brea. Thanks for watching our recap. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to keep up with our exciting movie journeys. See you in the next video.